What's going on everybody? So it is Friday, it is 11 in the morning, and I'm wide awake. So I figured to do a video. So I finally got around to watching the Disney Investors Day 2020 from yesterday. And these are my thoughts. So I watched um, how Disney Plus is including FX with Hulu and getting everything together. Um... <clears throat> That's cool, because I do love FX, and then I saw the Star Wars panel and the Marvel panel. I didn't care, I don't give a fuck about Nat Geo. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the Star Wars panel, it's alright. Like, ow, itch. Of all the stuff they announced for, uh, Visions, Lando, Rogue Squadron, Droid Story, Ahsoka, Rangers of the New Republic... Andor, Obi-Wan, Acolyte, Bad Batch, they're okay. And everybody's excited and shit because Hayden's coming back for Obi-Wan. Um, whatever. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's I'm not against the prequels or anything. I just don't really care, you know. Because everybody wants, because it's a thing of everybody is so excited for all this shit. And then, the reality of it is, it's all going to get delayed again. Like, everything has been, because either of COVID or some other shit. You know, somebody dies in the process of, this, of something being made, or we have another outbreak of something. You know? So, out of all them, which ones intrigue me the most for Star Wars? Bad Batch. I like that storyline. That was good. I'm looking forward to that. Andor, I like. That seems good. I mean, it's it really did excite me because I'm like, wow, Andor, finally. <laughs> Even though he's kind of insignificant in a way to me. It's just me. The Acolyte, that seems promising. Ahsoka's going to be good. Rogue Squadron movie, definitely looking forward to expansion on Rogue Squadron. That's going to be nice. Um, <clears throat> a droid story. Looks good, I guess. <laughs> Lando should be fun. Another season in The Mandalorian will be nice. I guess. Hope that kid dies. Visions, that's going to be a great anthology for sure. I love an anthology series. Those are good. Um, Rangers of the New Republic. Hmm. I don't know about that. It's interesting. It, it sounds interesting, but I'm not sure like what it's going to be like or anything you know i'm just like i don't know if it's going to be that good or whatever you know it's just one of those things that's up in the air with me like like i'm anti star wars right now i mean i like star wars but i'm more anti of it because it's just the whole that whole toxicity mindset narrative and shit just it ruins it for me. Like, it's so hard to get into something. Even though, you know, nobody can take your fandom away from you. It feels that way for me. Like, I'm just like, I can't get into it. It's so dumb and boring half the time. Um, For the Marvel panel... Um, well, actually, let me, let me see. Here. I mean, all these Star Wars shows... I'm looking at the shit on YouTube. Um, I don't know. It's hard to say which one's going to be the best. I don't know. I mean, Obi-Wan, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of excited about that, but not really. Because, yeah, it's cool Ewan McGregor and Hayden are reuniting, but, I mean, that's just going to be, I don't know. Because everybody's going to hype it up to be what it's going to be. And then it turns out to be something different. And everybody's going to be pissed. It's a, fu it's a fucking process. It's so clear as day on Twitter. Every time something new is announced, the fandom picks it apart, tears it to shit, treats it good. And they treat it good at first. And then when they see it, they treat it like shit. And then they go back, oh, this tweet didn't age well. What the fuck did you expect? Like, it's not going to be the way you think it's going to go. 
That's the problem. People think it's going to go like this, and it's not. <laughs> That's what's so sad. Everyone's like, oh, it's going to go that way. Like, no, it's not. Um, I am glad they're moving away from uh, OT Reliance. That's nice. Aside from a droid story, that's going to have 3PO and R2. I don't really give a fuck about them. Uh, Lando should be fun, because that'll hopefully have Donald Glover. I can't see him doing fucking Billy D. Williams. That would just be dumb. Because... It's the way the screenshots they showed showed it Lando's Falcon, so it's going to be set during Solo or before Solo, probably or during. I don't know. Ah, oh, fucking siren! At least my window's down. Um, I'm dead. Visions is definitely going to be the higher tier choice for sure. For me, anyway, because it's going to be an anthology series with the most celebrated Japanese artists in the industry that are bringing stories to life through anime, which is nice. Because I miss a good anthology. Like, if you've read the Visionaries graphic novel for Star Wars, it that that's what it's going to be like. It's going to be a bunch of different tales... I think it was... How many volumes was that thing? I think it was like... Six to... I think it might have been six to seven of them. I'm thinking six to seven. Something like that. But yeah, it was a bunch of anthology stories told by different artists and different writers. And it was amazing. I loved it. It was beautiful. That's where they got the... Um, it also has the very popular story of um, Obi-Wan versus Darth Maul as well. That was a good story. I love that. Um, which then got adapted for the Clone Wars. No, not Clone Wars. Rebels. <laughs> um... So, Ahsoka takes place during Mandalorian. That's going to be fun. So, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy they're doing an Ahsoka series, but at the same time, I don't know what to expect with it, which is nice, because it's good to not know. It's better than, you know, sitting there and be like, uh, no, I know what happens. Because, you know how it's, you know how social media is, they get rabid over fucking leaks and rumors, and they always apply all that shit together, and it's like, <sighs> like, it didn't happen the way it was supposed to, <gasps> I'm canceling this, help me cancel this show, I'm offended. <sighs> fucking retards. <laughs> um, what do I hope for Ahsoka? More story, I guess. I don't know. Honestly, more story, more locations. And to see how, you know, Rosario handles it. Like, she did good in The Mandalorian. That was a good episode. But, you know, I mean, this is a whole series for her. So it'll be interesting to see how her uh, origin story rounds out. Uh, Rangers of the New Republic, I'm guessing that's going to be more Rogue One based, I guess. Hopefully free of Force users. Like, that's the thing that's, that's exciting for me. Stop. No. There we go. Is that Rangers and or maybe Bad Batch and Rogue Squadron and Lando and a droid story will all be force user free. Easily, they, they'll they be force user free. And if that pisses people off, it's not fair. Mm, everything needs to have Jedi versus Sith. Every series needs Darth Vader in it. Mm. No, asshole. That's not how this works. <laughs> That's why I've always talked about how I brought this up in, in my video series about JVS and how that's so redundant half the time. It's always the same fucking thing. 
protagonist, antagonist, new lightsabers, new colors, new hilts, battles, climactic fight, and that's it. Nothing new. <laughs> Hopefully, like with the Acolyte and... Maybe with the Acolyte, it'll be a lot different because it's during the High Republic. And I know nothing about the High, Re High Republic at all. Like, I haven't... I know what was announced, but I don't know anything else. So, whatever. Rogue Squadron looks like fun. Because that'll be a lot of dog fighting and then training. So, it'll be a nice... Probably build-up deal and whatnot. And... um. I don't know, see how it goes. But Andor looks more grounded and more intriguing in terms of it focuses on one character versus needing all the other ones to support. Which is, it's interesting they're doing a solo series on Andor because I didn't really think of him as, you know, a standout character. Now, if they did something on trying to think who'd be a better choice like Saul Guerrero like if they did something on Saul Guerrero if it was a Saul Guerrero series that would make more sense Cassie and Andor really isn't that important honestly to me anyway um or if they did Guardian of the Wills that would have been a better series because that would have brought would have brought back Donnie Yen and uh guy who played Baz Malvis that would have been fun. Um, Bad Batch is going to be good right off the bat. I mean, they're all going to be good in different respects, but people will nitpick and cry and whine about how it's not what they thought it was going to be. <laughs> it was, fucking grow up. Uh, so, that's how I feel about the Star Wars panel. Like, I'm going to watch all of them. But I'm not really dead set on any that are, like, my top favorites, honestly. Um, let me see something here. Ah, shut up. There we go. That's better. Let's see. Um, from Marvel. Hmm. WandaVision seems intriguing. Because when, when I saw the trailer a couple times, nothing really clicked with me. And then watching it again in the panel, it made me think of MODOK. And... Um, Oh, Mojo. Is it Mojo World? Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, WandaVision. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, Secret Invasion. I have not read that storyline. I do want to read it and see how that goes. Um, for something that's that big, I'm glad it's a TV series. Because if they did it as a movie, it would be a clusterfuck like Dark Phoenix. <laughs> and Civil War. Yeah, I know people find that funny. I don't like Civil War. <laughs> I read the comics. I know what the fuck happens. The movie is such a watered down event of it. It's so dumb. It's pandered for kids. Like, they took the complexity of it and just butchered the shit out of it. <sighs> like, ugh. Whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see the other one. I forget all the ones they announced because I was watching different things. Armor Wars looks like fun, but I don't know. You know, I'm not big on new Marvel stuff because, I mean, out of 80 plus, um, well, actually, if you round it up, it's more like 100 plus movies and shows combined. A lot of them are hit or miss, depending on what you're watching. Like, I've grown up with everything that's come out so far. 
from the night from the 90s and then going back to the 80s so i've been through three decades already of marvel well actually comic book related stuff altogether. and i you know i've got a good comprehensive idea what's good and what's bad and so does everybody else nobody's opinion's right but i don't know all these different shows are just I don't know, I mean, they're appealing, but not that appealing, you know? Like, you get into it, and it's just not the same, you know? Like, you want to get into it, but can't. Um, so... Ooh, Ironheart. I have not read her story yet. I want to read her story, I just haven't really gotten around to reading about that yet. And I know that's going to piss everybody off, because... One, they don't like the fact that she's black, she's smarter than Tony Stark, and he passes the torch down to her. Or on to her. That's that's the three things I know about Ironheart. <laughs> yeah, we still have racism in comics. <laughs> Ain't that exciting? Um... But she does look good. She looks very the the I forget who the hell he picked, but um, yeah, she looks good. She does look like Riri. Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. That's probably gonna be stupid funny. That's all I got for that. Stupid funny. So, uh, oh, that's fun. I don't know. I'll watch it. I'm gonna watch all this stuff, but. I don't know. Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum yeah, Quantum Mania. That looks good. That sounds promising. Cause I liked Ant Man and the Wasp. I gotta watch the first one again yet. Um, but out of the two of them that are established now. Well actually there's four because they're in uh Ultimate Avengers one and two. Um and I think they have their own series as well. So out of everything established with them, and I haven't read the comics for them either because I'm behind on so much. Uh, I definitely like Ant-Man and the Wasp more. Like, that was cool. That was exciting. It was funny. It was great. Um, it was just wholesome, and I enjoyed the shit out of it. Mania, that looks... I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. We're obviously going to go to the Quantum Zone, which is going to be nice. Or the Quantum Universe, I should say. So, see what happens with that. Um, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, She-Hulk. Yeah, that looks interesting. I'm not, like... Uh, what's the word I'm not? I'm not... Uh, wowed by the fact Tim Roth is coming back as Abomination. I just don't really give a shit about that. Like, I really don't. I didn't like... Oh, there's the other one. Okay. Yeah, I didn't give a shit about The Incredible Hulk 2008. I really didn't. Like, it just... Nah. Not my thing. Um... I watched it. I didn't care for it. Edward Norton does make a decent Hulk, but... Eh, just not my thing, honestly. He just, I don't know. I just didn't really care for Incredible Hulk. I like Hulk 2003 more than I do Mark Ruffalo's rendition of Hulk. And them doing Fantastic Four again, This is what, three iterations? <sighs> Fuck. I mean, out of all the iterations of Fantastic Four that have been done, no, that's not, that's not right. There's not four. There's, uh, let's see here. There's the 90s cartoon. I grew up with that. The, the, the shitty 2005 and 2007 films. They're garbage. Oh, they're such fucking garbage. Ugh. The only reason they were popular is because Chris Evans and, uh, oh, what's that bitch's name? Shit, I can't think of her name. Ah, Jessica Alba were hot at the time. That's the only reason they were popular. That's it. 
take that out of the equation, the movie suck. It still sucks. <laughs> uh, the so that two films, the world's greatest hero series. That's really good. That's a solid twenty six episode run that I enjoyed. I really did like that. It was grounded. It was great. It was good. Then you have 2015's Fantastic. That I love. I love that. I know everybody fucking hates it. I love it. It's grounded. It's more... It gives a more realistic approach and sets up to build into what the team was going to be versus, you know, them, you know, cramming their whole origin story into one film. Like, you get their origin in one film. Josh Trank had the right idea. He had it to where, you know, you have them go, you know, they're coming together, and then, you know, Doom gets separated from them for a year, and then, you know, they get all these powers and shit from going to this other world and shit, dimension. And it built up into them turning into the Fantastic Four. It was perfect. It was a grounded approach, and I like that. And people were pissed as fuck. <laughs> Human Torch can't be black. That's wrong. They're all white. Like, motherfucker. One, who gives a shit? Two, it's peach. <laughs> can't even get your skin tone color right, dumbass. Like, you don't hear albinos crying. Like, shit, albinos are true white. <laughs> Damn. So, for Fantastic Four, I... Don't know how to feel about that. It'll have to... For me, it has to outdo 2015. Honestly, like, it has to outdo that. And every iteration before that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah, Black Panther 2. That's going to be good. Definitely. And it comes like, we're not replacing T'Challa. I'm like, okay, cool. I already knew that. <laughs> Because I remember the day Chadwick died, everybody was like, Who's going to play T'Challa? Who's going to recast him? Like, okay, you cry tits. Fuck. <sighs> I don't know. And I haven't even read anything of Black Panther aside from... Uh, well, the only thing of Black Panther I know is... Ultimate Avengers 2, Rise of the Panther, which I have and watched and enjoy that a lot. Great origin story for him. Um, and Black Panther from 2018. I haven't read any of the comics. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm behind on shit. Um, oh, yeah, Captain Marvel 2. That's going to be good. Um, Miss Marvel, Loki, Doctor Strange, those look good, but out of all those, the only one I'm really interested in is probably Doctor Strange, because out of, like, Doctor Strange is good shit, like, out of both films that are out now, the 2007 animated version and the 2016 live action. I like the 2007 one more. So, yeah. I'll have to see if that'll outdo its predecessors. Loki, that one, maybe that's going to be good. I don't know. Um, Miss Marvel, definitely excited for that. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch that. Um... Because I, I like the diversity angle. I like diversity in my shit. I can't stand that bland peach layout they always go for. It's like, seriously? Like, like get something new. <laughs> Thor Love and Thunder is going to be fun. That I'm anxious to see. I'm anxious to see Jane take up the hammer. That's going to be fun. Um, but there's more to it than that. I don't know the whole story. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think that'll be okay in terms of just okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it, honestly. Like, I can't think of anything else. But... <laughs> 
That's just how I feel about most of the stuff that's coming out. Like, nothing really... I mean, it's all good, but at the same time, it just doesn't, like... In, in, like excite me and shit because I'm just like I'm laid back like I give a fuck right now so which panel had the best turnout for content uh, I don't know honestly because both of them they were good but if you look at it in the long run like I said at the beginning they're gonna get delayed honestly it's gonna get delayed because uh Stuff is going back into lockdown again. My my workout log, that's on pause because Planet Fitness is shutting down till January 4th because of a COVID outbreak there. So, yeah, I look for more lockdowns to happen and more delays. So, but honestly, in terms of variety... Um, oh yeah, and the Marvel What If, that's going to be fun. I'm happy about that because that's all cell shading animation. I love cell shading. Fuck yeah. Cell shading was done in Star Wars Resistance and also Tron Uprising and a Scanner Dark, yeah, Scanner Darkly. That was a good movie. I have to rewatch that though. Um, but yeah, I love cell shading. That shit is beautiful. People don't like it because it seems stupid and off putting <laughs> or childish, I guess. I don't know. But I'm excited for it because I like the what if stories. Those are always the best ones. Like DC's got Tales from the Dark Multiverse, they have the Amalgam Universe, they have. Um, tons of what if scenarios. They've done that shit for years, decades. <laughs> and Marvel has too, but they don't really put a lot of emphasis on it. They just like, hey, look at this, but this is the better point. <laughs> like DC is pushing through with Pioneer and Change, whereas Marvel is still sticking to the basic bullshit. So that's just me. Um, I don't know, I'd have to say, I guess, Star Wars one, but I don't really know. I don't know. I mean, honestly, if you look at it in the, in the long run, the fans won because they're going to get new content. We're going to get new content, so, yeah. So, that's how I feel about Disney Investors Day 2020, so... Um, yeah, that'd be some funny shit if they canceled The Mandalorian after season two. <laughs> that would be so fucking funny. Oh my god, and next week is supposedly the finale, so, okay, cool. That'd be funny if they canceled it, though. <laughs> like, ah! I'm like, oh well. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I got. So I will probably come back later today with some other shit. So stay tuned.